Pisces. What in October? Here we go. <laughs> the eclipses are around the corner and you're, you're looking down and you're like, that's, that's going to be loud. And that's because Aries is your second house. Like it's regardless of your sun, moon rising, you can feel the energy through your vocal cords, through your like early childhood experiences. You saw Aries, you saw that fiery energy. And more importantly, through the transformation of partnership, through the ability to trust in the balance of evenness and partnership is where Libra sits for you in that eighth house of a lot of people say it's the house of transformation and I see that and the house of shared resources but for me it's about trust trust money trust inheritance trust but also like trust in others okay so like Pisces is looking down the barrel of these eclipses like more importantly, so the, the one eclipse is happening in Aries and Libra, which is the first one, right? We know this. It's like halfway through the month. We're going to be experiencing it. And then that'll be the first of a bunch of Aries Libra eclipses. But we're also facing off with the last eclipse in October towards the end, right before Halloween. We get an eclipse energy on the 28th and it's the last one in Taurus and Scorpio. And for Taurus and Scorpio specifically, specifically Taurus and Scorpio people in your life, and the Taurus and Scorpio parts of you, if you have any placements in either of those signs, this is very significant. You, This is the end of something. So there is a big ending. There is a big, like, it may have been two and a half years ago, you had like a epiphany and you were like, okay, I can live this kind of life. Depending on where those rulers sit in your chart, but more importantly, the fact that Scorpio is always sitting nine houses away so it's the nine third house it's that sibling cousin energy but also the the energy of neighbors the energy of aspirations the energy of faith um that's the taurus scorpio access for you like what you what you learned and what you know okay that's the energy of taurus and scorpio so those things are closing up you're closing up a huge chapter at the end so if you in like in my case i knew that i had a certain kind of life that i wanted to live certain kind of dynamics i wanted to have with friends and i had this vision and everything else well over the course of the couple of years here i've tried it with a couple of different people and I've come to learn that that didn't work, that that vision was skewed. And I didn't, uh, exp I didn't know the experiences I would need in order to make that kind of vision a uh, reality. And once I went through those experiences, that vision didn't look so rosy anymore. Well, that's the kind of thing that you come to terms with over the course of an eclipse movement, right? So the nodes of the eclipses, they move. 18 and a half months, that kind of stuff. Anyways, it's a long journey and it's ending for Taurus and Scorpio. So the vision, the way you communicate, the things you say to yourself, the kind of conversations you have, the relationships you have with your neighbors, your siblings, your coworkers, these are the kind of things that are shifting and changing and closing out a final chapter. Okay, so I've got some dates here and then we're going to go into the cards. Okay, Pisces. Now, oh, Pisces. So we're going to talk about Saturn too, because we all know Saturn's been ripping been ripping oh my god this retrograde it's like right come back to zero by the end of the month we're sitting with saturn at zero degrees of pisces again like this is ripping quickly through all of the things we thought about ourselves that identity of like oh i'm the dreamer i can build whatever kind of dream i want i can manifest whatever kind of dream i want and then it stopped and started going retrograde and it was like wait a second what are your bricks made of forget about laying bricks and knowing that you just instinctively know how to lay bricks and put mortar down what are your bricks made of did you even check the consistency of your mortar like we're going way back to the grains to figure this out and how so the first like kind of click about this would have happened around the 2nd of October which as I record this we're already past that the 2nd of October gave you like a that was right after mercury retrograde and there was this dispelling of your bone bullshit and realizing as you are dismantling these efforts that you would put together, you're starting to recognize just why that went wrong, especially over Mercury retrograde. As we experienced in September, and really with the Venus retrograde, and which is finally finished as like out of shadow period as I record this, 
we fully got to understand that like, yes, you, you need to be practical about building your dreams and you definitely need to put down that effort, that solid effort to build up those foundations that you really want to have to go forward with the rest of your life that you want to, you know, base your principles off of in this kind of thing. But that being said, if you don't actually know how to mix your mortar, your bricks are going to fall down the first time the wind hits it. And that's exactly what happened with the Mercury and Venus retrograde. So now we're looking at the mortar consistency and going, oh, we're going right back to the drawing board. And that that's very much the Saturn frequency that we're experiencing. So around the second, there was the, that would have been the, the last um, the last little uh, light bulb that needed to go off to make you recognize that it's actually a problem with your materials. It's not a problem with your skill set. It's not a problem with the blueprint. It's the materials you were using, and that's what needs to be revised. So uh, the only early aspect to any of the rulers, either Neptune or Jupiter, um, the only early aspect was on the second. And then there's kind of like a break. Like you get this time to study, and that's really what needs to be done. Um, with these last uh, movements of Saturn through the very beginning degrees is you, you really need to recognize it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to have, you know, tried something on and it didn't fit. It doesn't make you less um, of anything. It just means that that's not for you and it's okay how we... I, I say to my clients all the time, how you let go of something is so much more important than how you obtain it because there is always a separation. And when you, whether it be a breakup or a job leave or whatever, even if you're like moving, how you leave a space is more important than how you arrive into it because there will be a karmic receipt attached to how you leave that. So say you break someone's heart, you shatter it, you're rude and you're chaotic and you're inconsiderate. That person's going to be walking around with that wound. That wound is attached to you. That wound's got your signature on it and other people are going to pick up on that signature completely subconsciously most of the time, but it will find you. That karma will find you. So letting go of something gracefully is almost more important than how you obtain it. Okay. Um, that going forward, going forward. Okay. So like I said, there's a lot of time where things really are quiet and it's a good time to study, good time to really get serious about what you want. Be patient. These eclipses, this Mars South node energy. Okay. So first off, Libra sits in your eighth house. The, the way you partner with people, the way you work out the balance in your life in dynamics is all about trust. It's all about diving in and, and closing your eyes and free falling into partnership. That's why Pisces falls the way they do is because Libra's in the eighth house. That being said, your values are passionate. Your voice is loud. Pisces are known as quiet. Pisces are not quiet. Pisces are very happy to talk when they're comfortable with the people that when they fully trust, they never shut up. They will fully talk your ear off. And that's because of that airy second house. This is where that first eclipse is hitting. It's igniting your voice about what works and where your trust has been broken, where you feel like you betrayed yourself because you gave too much or you trusted the wrong people, your voice is activated. That's what this Aries full moon is halfway through the month. So with this studying, I need you to recognize that yes, you're bombarded with this information. And since Mercury and Neptune made that aspect at the beginning of October, there has been this like free flow of, of vibration and repeated scenarios over and over again, where you're just like, am I living in a movie? Like, why does this keep rewinding? It's because you're being being informed so that you can be confident when you speak on what you're about to say. Now, Mercury will make an aspect to Jupiter at the very end of the month. On the 29th is when I see Pisces getting very loud, getting very vocal about what is and what isn't, okay? We're going to be using our grace at that point. Venus is going to be moving into Virgo in October. And as that happens in the middle of October, there is this pleasantry that's coming into people that you deal with and the way that you're dealing with people you're being very diplomatic but you're taking no shit if you've ever sat with a virgo you'll know that they will tell you they will tell you exactly what the heck's wrong they have no problem vocalizing that kind of thing okay and that's because they have that loud ass 12th house screaming in the head so what comes out of them is really only the bare minimum of what's going on in there 
they will delegate to you what needs to be said. Okay. And as Venus comes through, there's going to be this beautiful, like peace focus from people that you have to deal with. So I would wait until Venus moves into Virgo before speaking on any of this knowledge you've been accumulating. Okay. Going forward from there. Okay. With Venus sitting in your seventh aspect in your first house, people are going to be dealing with you a little bit better. There will be some criticisms back and forth. You're going to be feeling criticism from other people. You're going to feel very critical of other people. Pull that back a bit. Use diplomacy. Remember, this is about fair and equal treatment for yourself and others. Okay. It's not about being the bully. Don't let that Aries frequency with the South Node Mars take you for a drive. Don't do that. Remember eloquency okay you can be eloquent you can be fair and still stand up for yourself it just takes patience speak slowly highly recommend speaking slowly i love sitting with virgos because yes they can talk your ear off sometimes but a virgo will pace themselves if they feel like the words and the messages are gonna get through better take note from that. Okay. So like I said, it, the middle of the month kind of just has this energy building of opportunities to speak your mind and be more eloquent and watch out for criticisms and take criticism with a grain of salt. Remember anytime that somebody's coming to you and saying, Hey, there's this about you and that about you and this about you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I will definitely work on those things. Thank you for showing me that side of myself. Curious why you're paying so much attention to me. But thank you. I'm definitely going to work on that. Don't tell other people what to do. That is not your job, Pisces, okay? This eclipse is going to be vocalizing you. So make sure that what you're saying is worth saying. Make sure what you're saying has purpose and and you have a plan for it to go somewhere. What happens out of it once it's out of your mouth is none of your business. But you only can control what you say, okay? So going forward from that, uh, there is some days that are more effective than others. The 24th to the 26th is when the moon is in your sign and like the days surrounding that, like it starts on the 22nd, takes you right to the end of the month. It is just going to be heavy. Okay. So the 22nd, there's a trine from Venus to Jupiter. And I do believe there's going to be some blessings there. And maybe that somebody says, especially because Jupiter's sitting in Taurus, there is this chance that there's this friend situation or there's a, a roommate or a coworker situation where you're able to say, I relate to you, but I'm not you. And there's this like, hmm, there's this connection of being able to speak it out, talk it out. Um, this could also be siblings as well. You could have like a, a heart to heart with a sibling where you fully appreciate them on a new level after the fact. Jupiter is retrograding. Okay. It's, and it's retrograding about Uranus. So we're talking about what our personal philosophy is and we're identifying with it and we're letting others identify with theirs and we're not taking offense that it doesn't match. We're appreciating the fact that it doesn't match because it takes all kinds. Right. Um, and then, so that kicks it off is this like kind of honey, sweet conversation where we appreciate each other. And then the 24th, the moon moves into your sign. And the 24th to the 26th, when it moves into Aries, there's just this frequency of like, yep, I'm doing me now. I'm doing me. I'm, I'm painting my house. I'm dyeing my hair. I, this is your day. Okay, Pisces, I need you to fully take that in because these eclipses are coming out strong right after. Um, and then when the eclipses are hitting, uh, Two days later, Mars makes an opposition to your Jupiter and you're going to feel the pressure. Now, it's likely you're going to want to talk about things. You're going to want to talk about yourself. You're going to want to talk about your experiences. This is an excellent time to focus on your creative pursuits and your vision and your goals. Okay. Because Mars does rule over Scorpio and Scorpio sits uh, 12 houses away or sorry, nine houses away. This is a time to really remaster the vision. So yes, going back to the original, um, the original mortar, uh, metaphor, you know, the right consistency. Now you you've studied how to make the bricks. Now, now that you know that your materials are even more solid, it's a time to tweak the blueprint because you know, your materials are so solid. You actually have more faith in what you're building. Okay. And that's what I see going forth for the second eclipse, which is the Taurus Scorpio thing. You are remastering the vision that you may have started about two and a half years ago. 
So Pisces, I hope that's been good. We're gonna go into the cards now. I'm gonna use the classic tarot here. And then I actually got these beautiful self-care cards, which are like not even a, not even oracle cards, they're like self-care cards. But I think my mom used to have the same deck. Um, when she passed, I, they were gone. They weren't in her apartment. I never saw them, but um, I and I only saw them once when she was living with this one lady. But as soon as I saw these cards in this thrift store, I was like, those look like my mom's cards. So, and I get chills every time I touch them. So I'm pretty sure that they found their way back to me. And we're going to use those to clarify. We're going to do a three card spread. We're going to look at what's been, um, what's coming and, uh, and we're going to look at what's been, what is, and what's coming. Um, First card up is the Emperor. Second card up is Judgment. Third card up is the Death card. These are all major arcanas. Emperor reversed. You let other people boss you. You literally took yourself out of the equation. What'd you do that for? It doesn't matter. You're not doing it anymore. Um, it also is a tempered energy. Like you're, you, you may have felt like your, your toes get stepped on or your rules got broken or you're your space got invaded or you were disrespected or disregarded when the emperor is reversed there's this energy of like muffled anger muffled fury um stifled energy and so that's what's been that's where this is rooted from this transformation which is a huge transformation current energy is the judgment card i freaking love this card the naked truth being seen by the heavens you are being called you are being beckoned up to do better okay this is not king queen energy this is of the people this is of the collective you are being called up you are you can feel this you are being reborn you are being recognized you are being elevated you are being ascended and you can really feel that coming down on you now the last card here is the death card and what i see for that is this eclipse energy this huge transformation with the taurus scorpion energy because this is also a scorpio card um so yeah these are there's two mars cards on the table actually aries energy so this is the first eclipse this is the middle point and this is the end point this is all serving a greater purpose this is beautiful so i'm gonna I, I'll elaborate a little bit oh, wow did you see that okay okay oh. okay so three cards here Hierophant reversed, Two of Swords reversed, and the Aries. So the why we got stifled, why we got stifled, conforming, contemporary spaces where you may have felt like the group setting or the, the overall respect, the overall, you were expecting a certain amount of conformity or a certain amount of alignment a sustainability a reliability because this is the Taurus card right and it puts you in a spot this is a rock and a hard place card and when it's reversed like you did this to yourself this is all self this is all self this is your fault I love you, Pisces. This is your fault. You did this to yourself. This yeah. stifled masculine energy in you, it's coming from a stupid expectation where you were just blinded and pushed yourself in. But you were in a rock and a hard place and you may felt like you didn't have a choice and you just rushed in. And you were like, I can save everybody. That's never going to help you if you're not the first person that you're saving. Um, and it shouldn't be like, a, uh, I'll help you because it'll help me too. If you're going to help somebody, it should always be because you want to help them and you know you're already good. Um, if you know you're already good, then you're helping someone. However, if you're helping someone under the guise of them helping you too, that's not really helping. That's a trade of, 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 of services and you don't get to be up at a higher ground or you shouldn't be up at a higher ground. Um, looking down on people or mm -hmm. taking a place of responsibility when there's supposed to be an even trade there, okay? Um, so the judgment card. A judgment card. Let's see here. Can I get clear? Wow. Okay, judgment card. Queen of Cups. Very feminine water energy. Seven of Swords reversed. Fool reversed. And the Hermit. Okay. Okay, Pisces. Yikes. 
emotional manipulation and deception of self. You did this to yourself. You dove in. You, you, you were like, it's fine. I'm just going to not look at the problem. I'm not going to look at the problem. And you were emotionally deceiving yourself. And that's what this lesson is. That's why we have to go in and study the mortar and study the mix. Because how did that happen? We got to make sure that didn't happen. That's where you are now. So we're going to go a little deeper. Let's see about this eclipse coming up. Eclipse coming up. Whoa. Okay. King of Swords, and then some cards flipped over here. Ah, Ace of Wands. One more. Yep. And then Nine of Pentacles. So what's coming forward? Mental clarity, new beginnings, new objective, and a whole level of peace you've not felt before. And I like the fact that I have a Nine to the Nine. The Hermit is a Nine card, and then the Nine of Pentacles, so you're definitely getting the lesson and, and sustaining yourself now so uh, to recap the uh, first eclipse and the, uh, the energy that's like right here right now coming into the first eclipse is feeling stifled and understanding that your your prerogative your expectations there's no way it can work because there's no clear understanding and there's definitely not clear communication. There's a need to, to save everybody else or scream and speak up about things. There's an urge to. That's what's being stifled um, is a truth. The truth is being stifled. So during the first eclipse, your, your advice. All right, we are going to look at those cards. So these are the cards here. We're going to look deeper into these. These have messages for us, but I, I am going to ask a little bit more. I want to know more information about this eclipse. So I'm going to pull some more cards here, and I'm going to do this in the extended. But we'll do this in the extended. So I'm going to pull a couple more cards. I'll let you see them, and then I'll read them off camera and put it in the um, extended. So for the judgment card, oh, there's three for the three for the emperor. One for the judgment, and two. Okay. So yeah, for the emperor card, the advice for this. The advice for the judgment card, and the advice going forward. Hmm. Hmm. We're gonna get into this in the extended. Um, can't wait to read this. I'm also going to pull some clarity cards. Uh, these are just communication cards and we're going to go a little deeper. We're going to go, we're going to figure this out together. Okay. Pisces. But anyways, I've been recording forever. It's like 22 minutes. This is not going to fit on TikTok. Full YouTube here. Full YouTube. Anyways, I love you Pisces. I'm going to keep shuffling and, uh, read on the extended. Thank you. Bye.